It's time to unload the toad, unclog the frog, and uninhibit the ribbit. Only shoot the stars, break the This video and my channel are sponsored by untapped.gg. If you're looking to get a great look at your decks, at your metagame, at your skills, and improve them by using data-driven resources, I highly recommend untapped.gg. You can find it in the link in the description of this video. I personally use untapped.gg to see where I am struggling when I'm trying to climb up ranks and get inspiration for decks to play by looking at what other people are playing and how they perform against the decks that I'm struggling against. So again, that's untapped.gg. Hello everybody and happy Halloween! Welcome to Brawl Stars! I'm Amy the Amazonian and today I'm playing one of my favorite decks, the Gitrog Monster. You better get good with the Gitrog. So Gitrog Monster is all about sacrificing lands. This is something that the commander does itself. It allows you to play extra lands per turn and it also draws you cards when a land is put into your graveyard from anywhere. The Gitrog Monster synergizes with ramp, big green things, and things that look at lands being in your graveyard. Gitrog Monster is one of my favorite cards. They originally added it to Arena as just a general card. They, they put it in as the reward for entering into a Brawl queue. So you could actually play this in Standard Brawl at one point. It was a really weird thing that it was only legal in Arena. You could play it there. But as a historic Brawl deck, Oh, it's so much fun. You get so much value. You get to play incredibly powerful cards like Nissa, like Multani. And you get to have a really good time. You also get to sacrifice a lot of your lands. So we have things like Spring Bloom Dryad, Roiling Regrowth, and Harrow to help you build up your graveyard and then bring it all back because, you know, you're putting lands in the graveyard using cards like World Shaper or Mending of Dominaria. You can even just play lands from your graveyard if you use Crucible of Worlds or Ramunop Excavator. They're all so good, and I think you all are going to love this deck. Also, as just an extra bonus, because we're playing Golgari, we have access to Golgari Removal, which kicks ass. Finding the Old Gods. Death Sprout. That's removal that destroys almost anything and ramps you. How about Casualty of War? Destroy an artifact, creature, enchantment, and land. And Planeswalker! That's a card. This is a card. We even get board wipes like Finality, like Massacre Worm. I'm counting that as a board wipe. It totally counts. It's so good, and it's one of my favorite color combinations. So let's take it into the queue and see what this frog can do. Lothis, God of Destiny. Also God of Exiling the lands that I'm putting in the graveyard in order to get mana. I'm gonna keep this hand. It has a land or elf. It has three lands, and it's got Urg, Spawn of Turg, a recent addition to this deck. It's a frog beast. Clothies! Indestructible. God. Only as a creature if they have seven devotion. And exiles cards from graveyards. It can be either player's graveyard, and it either does damage, gains life, or adds mana. Let's get started with some ramp. And, yep, nope, they're going to uh, bolt the bird, or in this case, shock the elf, using that removal to get rid of Llanowar elves. I don't actually have a good play for turn two, so I'm going to use my Bajuka Bog and exile that shock out of their graveyard. That's just one less thing that they can exile with Clothis, and it's unlikely to make a difference. Okay, how about a land? And, do I feel like blocking or ramping? If I cast Hero here, I could actually keep up Assassin's Trophy and use that to do something like destroy runaway Steamkin. Uh, if I play Urg, I can block and put lands in my graveyard, which is kind of good for Clothies. I'm just gonna sit here and pass the turn. Hero is an instant speed card that uh, actually gets you to untapped mana, which is pretty nice. They attack me with the Runaway Steam Ken, and I'm going to sacrifice the Bajuka Bog, because I'd kind of like to play it again later from my graveyard. And get one black and one green. We do have a little bit of snow mana in this deck, because we're running into the north. And now I'm going to ramp my opponent 
by using Assassin's Trophy on Runaway Steamkin. The reason for this is this can eventually generate a lot of mana and give them these super aggressive attacks. I don't want that to happen, so I'm just taking it out now. Also, their commander's indestructible because it's a god, so... I just... I just don't think I'm going to be able to do that much with it. There's a Gitrog monster. I get to play an extra land per turn. There's my overgrown tomb. And who's getting exiled? Do you want to exile my Bajugabog? Get yourself some mana? That's what they went with. It doesn't deal damage to me, but it does stop me from bringing it back. And it also removes some of the power Urg would have had. I don't have anything to cast at instant speed, so we're just going to sacrifice a land and hopefully draw something good. I'm going to take Mending of Dominaria here. Let's mill. Also, something very important about my lovely little commander here is that it's a 6-6 six, six with Death Touch. That's important. Very important. <laughs> They're probably going to want to hit a creature this time rather than a land, knowing that I can bring a creature back from the graveyard using Mending of Dominaria. Ooh, play with fire. Okay, that's two damage. Followed by four from Thundering Rebuke. My commander is now in the grave, and I am going to move it out of the grave and into the command zone. Hmm, I'll take six. This is definitely a very aggressive Clothes deck. It feels very low to the ground, uh, which is very powerful. Uh, Spring Boom Drive is ramp. Mire Triton is pretty good defensively. Um, I'm going to take Mire Triton here. I could play this frog again. Could play Urg. I'm gonna actually lead with Mire Triton. The more lands I can get into the graveyard, the more I'm going to be able to bring back when this flips. Here comes Urg, Spawn of Turg. Not to be confused with any other Urgs. I do love that for some reason, if you look at, I think it's Slogurk, Urg, and Gitrog monster, there, there's like a theme of frogs being about lands and graveyards. I don't really know why that's a thing, but it's very cute. So because we milled a Crucible of Worlds, unfortunately, we are going to be in this strange spot of... We don't have many ways left to put lands from my graveyard back into the battlefield until we draw this again. All right, so our graveyard's getting shuffled in. Do I want everything to die? Yes. Yes, I do. I actually think it might have been the right move there to animate Hive of the Eye Tyrant and put the two plus one plus one counters on it. It would have been tapped, it wouldn't have died, it just would have been value. Here comes the Gitrog monster. And here comes Incubation Druid. I want to be able to block Den of the Bugbear. And I'm putting this upkeep stop because I am hoping to tap whatever land I sacrifice here for mana, then draw from it. I think I'm going to sacrifice a meeny, meeny, miny swamp. Old growth troll, den of the bugbear. Clothes is only two devotion away. This might result in Gitrog monster dying, but I'm still going for it. Do you have an Ember Cleave? Please don't. No, it's Inscription of Abundance! Putting two plus one plus one counters and fighting my Incubation Druid. I'll move my commander to the command zone. Get Rock Monster now costs nine. Get Rog's like, I want value. I know you do, buddy. I know you do. And right now, Clothis is just draining us out of life. Doing two damage each turn really does add up. They are not able 
to sacrifice old growth troll here, are they? Oh nope, they had they had untapped mana. That's fine and dandy. Take another two. And now I'm gonna take another four. Um, I think in the theme of the deck, I wanna kill the Den of the Bugbear here because, hey, I like lands and graveyards. And now I'm going to first tap this swamp and then sacrifice it. It enters their graveyard. I draw Cavalier of Thorns. Now my regular draw for the turn that's going to make this empty out. We're gonna go to main and I'm going to cast Cavalier of Thorns. This is going to throw a bunch of cards in my graveyard. And I'm going to take the untapped land to put into play. I'm going to play this, the Lotus Field, and sacrifice to Forest, because it's going to let me draw off Get Rog Monster. Dryad, sure. Woodland Chasm, great. And I'm going to attack for six. They have so much life because of Clothes. It's so strange to think, yes, a Gruul deck that gains life. Gruul can gain a lot of life. Gruul can gain a lot of life really fast. Alright, this time I didn't set the stop. But I have plenty of mana in plenty of colors, thanks Dryad. Oh, hey! Erg's back! You know how my life total is really low and I'm kind of worried about that? I'm going to use Erg to sacrifice some lands and gain some life. And draw cards off Get Rog Monster. Mana, who needs it? I need life. I need my life to not be zero. In fact, I need it to be as far from zero as I can get it. Now we've got these really good blockers. So again, I'm going to attack in here. Because this token doesn't have any devotion, it doesn't have a mana cost. Right now, Clothis is only at her own devotion. She has two, just her own red and green pip. I don't really have to worry about her attacking. Fireblade Charger won't have haste, but will still do damage when it dies. This time, let's go for an upkeep stop. And I'm going to tap and sacrifice. Okay, first I'm actually going to activate Green Seeker. Give me the good, good green stuff. It's not a land on top. Okay. Throw that to the bottom, because I really don't care about getting an explore. Sacrifice the land. Get Evolving Wilds and Ghost Quarter. Hey, that's land destruction. Nice. Uh, let's go to main phase. Evolving Wilds, we're going to sacrifice it. Grab a land. More importantly, get things in our graveyard. Acolyte of Affliction, going to mill ourselves a teeny tiny itty bitty bit. We mill the land. Now we can bring back whatever we want. How about Pool of Vigorous Growth? This is one of my favorite cards. It really is one of my favorite cards. I'm going to play it. And then QQ! How much mana do I have? One, two, three, four, five. X equals five. We're going to discard this land. The Thriving Grove. Which draws me a card. Erg is huge now. And we're going to attack in with all of these. By the way, we got Kintorius. We actually do have a bunch of ways to make cards leave our graveyard. Okay. Or you could make a card leave my graveyard. Thank you, Clothies. <gasps> but it didn't matter. We got royally erupted. They did direct damage to burn me out. You know, I was thinking about leaving mana up just to sacrifice more lands to Erg. But they killed Erg. This is perfect. I love this. What a great game. Miriam, Sentinel Worm. She makes dragons and then makes more dragons. We've got three mana here. I'm going to start with Evolving Wilds and I'm going to get a forest so we can get Castle Garenbrig to come in untapped in the future. Use our command tower to start putting things in the graveyard. Hey, look at that! A land in the graveyard. We might be able to bring that back later. They named Dragon on Unclaimed Territory, and they have a dragon that can tap for mana. If that mana gets used for a dragon, then it gains them life. 
But Scaled Nurturer, I'm gonna say no thanks and kill it. What's great about Elspeth's Nightmare is next turn, I'm also gonna get to look at their hand and let's see what they got. Any non-creatures? Oh God. Why do you like this? This is cool. I like your girl boss. I don't like everything else you're doing. Realm walkers out, gonna name dragon. Is there a dragon on top of your deck? Can you play it for your one mana? Probably not. All right, we're gonna re-exile their graveyard and I'm gonna play Binding the Old Gods. And I'm gonna hit the Carnelian Orb of Dragon kind because I know that they're having trouble with their mana and we are the kind of people who will destroy your mana resources because we're so scared of your commander that we wanna make sure you can never cast it. And that's gonna win us the game. Destroying non-land permanents, it's good. Our opponent has hate against our Snowlands. I'm gonna keep this hand. And I'm going to tell people something about this deck because it gets asked a lot. Amy, if you're running some snow lands for Into the North, why isn't your entire deck snow lands? Well, my friend, because of Redan. Redan says snow lands your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. And that sucks. So we're going to play our snow land right here. Ah, we got a beside you and we got evolving wilds. I'm gonna use the evolving wilds, crack it, and get a second black source for Death Sprout and Doom Whisperer. Beautiful mana. Hmm. Right now there's nothing for me to hit with Death Sprout. They could play Redan next turn. But I think I'll just play. Meyer Triton, Mill a Little, and Tranquil Thicket. This way, next turn, we can play the Get Rog Monster. Faithbound Judge. This is a 4 4 flyer that can't attack right away, but can turn into a curse that wins the game from the graveyard. Well, I think that I'm going to turn this Faithbound Judge into some mana. For me! Grab another one of these Snowlands to get it out of the deck, because, again, Redan. Navigation Orb, this can get the mana. Looks like this could be a mono white deck with a lot of control elements in it. I'm kind of guessing based on navigation orb. It's, it's the sort of thing that that's where I would see it. Um, get Rog Monster. I don't have an extra land. Doom Whisperer. It's a fun little buddy. What do I want right now? I think I want Doom Whisperer. I'll attack in for two. see if they'll pay two life. Two mana. Nope. Mangara the Diplomat. Nice. Mangara is going to punish me if I cast two spells per turn or attack with two or more creatures. We'll draw them cards. Restoration of Igonjo. That's a great card in white. Cast two attackers. Nothing happens. We're going to activate Doom Whisperer. Putrefy. Castle Garenbrig. I'd like both of these cards, so I'm going to actually... Keep these on top in this order. My turn! And I'm going to putrefy Mangara. Right now, there isn't anything that they can bring back with Restoration of Iganjo, so we're just going to attack in. Boop, boop. And I kill them Mangara first, because I don't want them to draw cards. I think that that's very legitimate. Bringing this back. 
waiting to see if they curse me or wipe the board. So that is actually what I was expecting was a board wipe from them. Um, in response to the board wipe, I'm going to pay a little life. What's up, bug? I'm going to fill my graveyard up a little bit. This would be better if I had Gitrog on the battlefield, but I'll take this as it is. And I've got a nice little land that sacrifices itself on the top of the deck for my Gitrog monster. Here it comes, Gitrog monster. I played the Fabled Passage first to make sure I could sacrifice it with this on the battlefield if they had any removal, instant speed. Doesn't look like they did. And we drew Eat to Extinction. Do you pay the two? Nope. They're happy with what they have. On to Inversion! Oh, okay. I don't even have to destroy their stuff. They destroyed it. Um, I'm actually kind of comfortable leaving Gitrog Monster in the graveyard for finale. Um, even though I don't have too much else here. So, I'm going to do that. I'm going to leave my commander- Oop, I clicked wrong. I was going to leave my commander in the graveyard. Sometimes you just gotta click bad. Hmm, time for the Lich. A little bit of indestructible action. Or do I want to go for the finisher? I want to go for the finisher. Here's Multani. Multani gets plus one plus one for each land in the battlefield and a graveyard. And it can come back to my hand. Oh, I have sinned. The sinner's judgment is going to put me on a countdown. And Multani is going to put you on a countdown. Called Fight Me. Do you have a way to get rid of me? Various protection. Fine. You don't die this turn, opponent. No damage gets dealt. Their life total can't change. We're going to play Underrealm Lich. Right now, this has one counter on it. Three or more loses the game. Valkmira is going to reduce my damage by a little bit and also tax me if I start trying to hit them. Oh, okay, so they're going to get double damage protection down with protection of the Hecma and Valkmira. But we're still going to win because we just have so much damage between these two creatures. Nice. I'll take it. Our opponent is using a trick that we also have uh, told people how to do, which is using the Post Malone avatars. It's unfortunately too late to unlock them now, but if you wanted to see how you could have unlocked them, uh, my video about the Post Malone event had that information. We're going to keep this, and we're going up against Eliwick Tumblestrum. Now, I kind of doubt that this is actually the Eliwick deck from the event, because I feel like anybody who's playing it and went out of their way to copy the deck is going to add a little bit more to it. Oh, I see that you also got a Lane or Elf. Mine's not coming out on turn one. Mm-hmm, they ramped. They ramped again. Will they ramp some more? I guess we'll find out. They could also just play Eliwek here, and it would be hard for me to kind of catch up to destroy her. Dungeon Descent. Nice. And they have the Tangled Florahedron here. I've been imagining they're going to venture into the dungeon. And in they go. We're going to want to try to find Remover for Eliwick before she completes a dungeon and ultimates. Oh, hey, Bajookabog. But we actually just have great ramp here, so I'm going to play the Spring Bloom Dryad. Sacrifice my snow covered forest to get a forest and a swamp. They're gonna come in tapped. And I'm going to attack Eliwick with Lanor Elves. I'm happy to trade a Florahedron for a Lanor Elf. Overgrown Battlements. 
even more ramp. All you have is ramp. Hey, ramp's good. Ranger class. Nice. And they can even upgrade Ranger class here. So they can start looking at the top of their deck and cast creatures from there. Cool. Um, we have pretty good choices here for what we want to play. Uh, I could just go for my commander. I'm actually going to start with my commander. Get Rog Monster. Crack this Evolving Wild, see what we can draw. Maelstrom Pulse. Hey, that can kill an Eliwick. And, um, I don't know. The Chukabog exile their non-existent graveyard. They're mono green, so their graveyard stuff is probably going to be minimal recursion. What's important is that we can kill Eliwick. Bees! Uh, I could also destroy all four bees. Alright, Amy, what would you rather do? Kill the commander or the bees? Not the bees. Very much yes, the bees. They made Gitrog Monster into baby this turn. I'm gonna use my Mire Triton to see if I can mill a land and maybe draw something good. Okay, Augur of Autumn, that would let me play lands from the top of the deck. But I think we're just going to kill Eliwick. You may have noticed that I got a Meat Hook Massacre. Do you know what Meat Hook Massacre is very good at doing? It's very good at killing bees. And other things on this battlefield right now. I would say that this is pest removal. Yeah, that's not a Crater Hoof Behemoth. If it was, we'd be dead. Okay, they mill, they mill, they mill, they mill. There's a Vornclex and a Reclamation Sage in the graveyard. Lanor Visionary coming out. I feel like they're going to attack me with some bees. Buzz, buzz. I'm going to, while I wait for them to make up their mind, tell you guys about a wasp story I have. When I was in college, outside of one of my dorms, there was a wasp nest underground. And I, being the kind of person I am, decided to mess with those wasps. Because I think it's fun to make it so wasps are going through mazes. So I actually built a little plastic maze out of tubes and hooked it up to the entrance of the wasp nest and made the wasps go through it in order to get to their home. Did I get stung while doing this? Yes. Did the wasps all solve the maze and I guess leave a scent trail for the other wasps? They sure did. Why did I do this? Great question. I don't know. I was 19 and bored. They ended up uh, exterminating that wasp nest because it was outside of a dorm room in a highly populated area not long after that. Wasps, by the way, are not evil. They're necessary pollinators. Everybody kiss a wasp today. All right, get wrong, monster. Give me some more dirt. This ain't dirt. This isn't dirt. Hmm. Soul Shatter. Cavalier of Thorns. They want to get the bees back. I don't know what I want to do. It's hit, it's hit Eliwick. <laughs> I'm going to play Augur of Autumn to start. I'm gonna cycle this tranquil thicket. Nice. And attack Eliwick.
They're protecting Eliwick by blocking here. And Eliwick has completed a dungeon. Here come the bees. Bzz. I think we're going to call the exterminator again. Unfortunately, this would also destroy all of my creatures. Um, I might want to actually sacrifice Gitrog here just to maintain the amount of lands I have. We're actually going to decline. Move my commander to the command zone. Oh, look, a land. And, um... Let's cause some problems. Massacre girl problems. So everything is dead except for Massacre Girl. They'll be able to ult Eliwick, which will give plus two, plus two, trample, and haste to all creatures they play. Go ahead and ramp with the Roiling Regrowth. Get some more of that good, good green stuff. Oh, hi, Yorvo. Are you going to give Yorvo the big buffins? Or are you going to keep Eliwick alive? Primal Might, they're fighting Massacre Girl! You lose another life. Thank you, Meat Hook Massacre. Even the rebalanced version of this is still very good. I would have like 50 life from killing all those bees. If this uh, was the regular version of uh, Meat Hook Massacre. All right. They ulted Eliwick, so now their creature gets Trample and Haste and plus two, plus two, and another plus one, plus one from Ranger class. Nice. Um, Yorvo, though, has exactly three mana in its cost, so we're going to go ahead and destroy it. Die. Destroying the uh, Ranger class will probably also be necessary in the next few turns. Remember, this lets them play creatures off the top of their library once they get it to level 3. There it is. You have a creature. They have Jahira! Oh, okay. I'm surprised they didn't just play the Jahira. That lets them kill Vraska. Nice. Yep, that's good damage right there. Um, also, Hexproof from Artifacts and Enchantments does not mean Hexproof from Death Sprouts. We're gonna go ahead and play this, play this, kill you. Pew pew! Get a land. We don't even have to see what it is. Cavalier of Thorns, get another land. How about the Scry Land? Show me what's on top. It's Crucible of War- I like Crucible of Worlds. I want that Crucible of Worlds in hand and also to gain two life, so I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice a forest. Thank you very much. And put that into my hand. Ooh, the Defiler of Vigor! Nice! It also has Haste and Trample. And it looks like they're just going to go to take out Vraska. Um, if I block here, Vraska would still die, so that's nine damage to Vraska. That's better than nine damage to my face. Oh, but now I want to play pool. Don't do it, Amy. Get Rog Monster. Crucible. Um, how about land and Bajuka Bog? Land. Pool or put Multani in hand. Pool. And I'm going to attack them. Because, you know, we're both on clocks here. Do I need a Shia? I might want a Shia. I was thinking I could make a 0-0. Zero, zero. Um, there's one card you can hit with Pool of Vigorous Growth that stays alive for 0 mana. That's Ornithopter. Your chances of hitting it are not great. Colony Ambush. They're killing the Cavalier of Thorns. That's actually going to let me put a card from my graveyard back on top of my deck, though. So let's see what we have... Ooh, ooh, hmm. Oh, there's a lot of good choices out here. 
I'm going to put Raska on top. Do you attack me? They do. I block. I have death touch. Move my commander to the command zone. They lose a life. We're gonna play Raska to start. And destroy Ranger class, since it lets them play more creatures, and we know it's not a creature on top of their deck. It could be something that makes creatures, but it's not a creature. Then we're gonna play Ashaya. Because she's huge. Just massive. I'm gonna put Multani into my hand. Return to lands. Oh, that one and this one. That does make Ashaya a little smaller, but I don't think that will be an issue. I'm just trying to uh, get some things set up here. Oh, nope, come on. There we go. Sorry, this is very difficult. And X equals two, one, two. Get myself a separate little blocker buddy here. Discarding this forest. What did we get? Hired Hexblade. Oh, Hex. We got 12, 12. We got two, two. Elewick, what about you, you? They venture into a, the dungeon, they get a scry here, because they did the first piece of the dungeon of the Mad Mage. And when your hand gets really big like this, or you have cards that you can play from multiple zones, it can get very hard to select a card, because they all wiggle around so much. Oh, guess what? This is a land. You can't destroy it. You could destroy this, 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 or this. But you can't destroy Ashaya because she's a land. Meteor Golem, though, still could attack. It's not gonna do anything. We're gonna win. Nice job, us! It's A.A. Ron, spelled A.A. Ron, playing Sarkhan Fireblood. It's probably going to be Mono Red Dragons. I'm gonna keep this hand, and we're gonna go up against the flaming, fiery, flying beasts that Sarkhan can get mana for. Okay, they mulliganed. Must not have been quite enough dragons in their hand, or enough ramp. It can be very difficult to line up early removal into late dragons for their kind of deck. All right, let's start with Memorial to Folly because it comes in tapped. Flare to Hydra will also come in tapped if we have too many lands here. I can't do anything with this. Flare of the Hydra, I'm not turning you into a tapped 1-1. One -one. That's not useful. Lair to Hydra's like, please do it. Do it for me. All right, I'm going to just focus entirely on ramp here. And I'm going to cast Harrow right now. And I'm going to get rid of the Death Cap Glade to get one of these and one of those. I can't actually do anything with the mana. It's just, I have it. It'll make it look like I can do something with the mana. I want to make sure I got a basic forest for Castle Garenbrig. Oh, here we go. Sarkhan's on the battlefield. They discard. Forgotten cave. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get my commander out. Because it's a big frog. And I love big frogs. Hmm, land. I think I have enough of that. This is kind of a land. This gets me two lands, and this gets me things back from the graveyard. You already know what this is. It's a land. <laughs> okay, Sarkhan, you can have up to six mana for your dragons here. That's enough to cast almost every dragon in red. You can cast Lathless. Can't cast Dragoseth. Aaron, I await your next move. They're going to want to have something out, though, because otherwise I'm going to be able to attack Sarkhan and destroy him. For four mana, red could destroy Gitrog Monster. Something like Perforos' Intervention would be enough to kill it. But it's still asking for a lot. 
Okay, no, they're discarding and drawing. Spitflame is not enough to kill Gitrog Mantra. You would have needed two burn spells if that was your route to go to destroy my frog. Oh, look, it's other Sarkhan! Wanderer to Shiv! This is going to discount dragons in their hand. These two are a great combination. My mono red dragon deck actually used to have Fireblood as the commander and now has Sarkhan Wanderer to Shiv as the commander. Okay, they made a Shivan dragon. I'm going to tap this forest and sacrifice it. We're going to draw, get a land. Draw again. Go to main phase. We've got Castle Garenbrig. We've got a whole lot of stuff. I can play an extra land here. Um, I have Lair of the Hydra, which I'm going to turn into a 5-5. Five five. And I'm going to take out both of these Planeswalkers. Goodbye, Dragon Hands McMike. All I have out is my commander right now. That's okay. That's all I need. They do have a Shivan Dragon in hand and probably another dragon. Remember, they had six mana before and did not cast a dragon. So I feel like they don't have one. Nope, they have Burn. So they're hitting me with an Abrade. Do you have another Bolt? And take out the stop because I'm pretty sure Gitrog's about to die. Brittle Blast! Five damage and it's exiled. We're going to put it back to the command zone and we're going to remove the perpetual effect of whenever it dies, it goes here. I want it to be able to go to my graveyard. Um, we have Castle Garenbrig. We have this. I don't really want damage here. We're going to go Castle Garenbrig just to generate a bit of extra mana. And play Druid of the Emerald Grove. Grab two lands. We did a middle roll, so this is a Cultivate. One into hand, one into there. And that gives me five mana left to play Doom Whisperer. Doom Whisperer, I can pay two life and surveil too. You have big flyers? I have big flyers. You have enough mana now for that Shivan Dragon you had conjured? Do you want to play it? Are we going to Whisper Doom? Oh, hey, Lathless. I feel like if they had Lathless before, they would have played her. She's awesome. Also, she's dead. Bye, Lathless. Lathless is good. But I cannot let Lathless live because she would be spitting out 5-5 five, five dragon tokens. And she can also pump up every single dragon and get really, really scary really, really fast. Because they're probably going to be playing a lot of single scary creatures, I'm going to grab that Death Sprout from the graveyard with Timeless Witness and put it back into my hand. I didn't play a land there, so I did have the option of playing Kazandu Valley. I feel like having a creature might be what I want here. Shivan Dragon. Spit Flame can't come back. And now it's our move. I'm going to destroy the Shivan Dragon. Get a land. Suppose we can do this. One, two, three, four. This, or this. You know what? I'm going to go for a double spell here. Kazandu Mammoth. Elspeth's Nightmare. It does not have any targets, but it's going to show me their hand next turn. You have seven life remaining. Are your single dragons enough for my recurrable removal? Will you be able to protect them even if I make you discard a non-creature non-land? Hey, hey, Ron, I'm waiting on you. We have, a, we, have, we have a lot of damage. And even if they were to destroy all creatures, unless they also made a blocker, Player to Hydra's going in. Star of Extinction! That's what I'm talking about! They're destroying land and all my creatures! Magnificent. Uh, I'm actually going to drop the Scoot Swarm into the graveyard and put this Augur of Autumn on top of the deck.
Now show me your secrets. How have you not been playing dragons? You have dragons! Why aren't you playing dragons? Were you just holding onto board wipes like, eh, I'll get them next turn. I'll get them next turn. I'll get them next turn. I'm going to start with Augur of Autumn. Show me what's on top of my deck. It is fine finality. Now here comes the Gitrog monster. Let me pass the turn. They have enough mana to kick Varix, don't kick the dragon, and make two four fours. Um, they could also play Sarkhan and a, I guess an unkicked Varix or just mana form Hellkite. Nope, they're going for two four fours. Probably a good move since it builds up the deck and the battlefield quite a bit. They also left one red open so they can return Spitflame to hand. Nice! I'm going to sacrifice this forest. And you already know what's on top of my deck. It's find of finality. There goes their graveyard. Let's go for Takanuma. Do I want to cycle it or do I want to just play it? I can only play it from the from the top. I was wondering if I wanted to um, maneuver the top of my deck a little bit more. I'm about to kill my Augur of Autumn, so I'm glad I got some value out of it. And now let's go ahead and... Actually, you know what? I'll save her. I'm going to save her and attack for a little bit less here. I could have attacked for four had I put the counters on Gitrog Monster, but I feel like keeping this alive is a good move. It also means it won't die to Spit Flame! Yay, not dying to Spit Flame! I made them drop uh, last turn at Hour of Devastation, or two turns ago. Okay, mana form Hellkite. At instant speed, they could make a 3-3 flyer. Okay, they're going to have a 2-2 here. They may as well attack with it since it is ephemeral. It's going to be sacrificed at the end of turn. Sacrifice or exiled? Exiled. We'll go ahead and sacrifice our swamp. Goodbye, Swamp. Ooh, hive up the Eye Tyrant. Scooch that off the top. Gonna get the Timeless Witness. No, I'm actually gonna start with Paradise Druid. Oh, I should have used my um, Castle Garenbrig. We can replay our Lair of the Hydra. We can bring out this Timeless Witness. We can return our single target removal. We can return our board wipe. We can return all sorts of things. I'm gonna get the Death Sprout. I could have, by the way, just done that and attacked their, uh, or uh, hit their Mana Form Hellkite. We would not have killed them if we did that. We would have just hit them for four damage, since they are able to make a blocker at instant speed. Here we go, Spit Flame! Spitting out a 3-3. Three, three. They could go for a double block, they could go for single blocks. I like this. You're at five. Mindstone, that are looking for an answer. What they need is a damage based board wipe that manages to deal six and to get rid of both of these. Now, do I think they're going to be able to do that? No. Do I think I've won? Totally. They discard. This is a replicating ring. They draw. It's nothing. Sacrifice a forest. Go to combat. Okay, draw our cards, draw our cards, blah, 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 blah. And I swing in for lethal, plus a little extra on the top. Boop, 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 boop. There were no overloaded mystic masteries to wipe the board, wipe the board, wipe the board, and wipe the board again. Especially because I did exile their graveyard. Instead, nope, we're swinging in. They're at negative nine, and the frogs have defeated the dragons. It looks like amphibians win this one, reptiles. 
Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars. And thank you to everybody who watched it live over at twitch.tv slash Amazonian. Right now, my channel is a waiting room for Worlds. The World Championship Top 4 is about to begin. But if you're watching this as a video, it's Halloween or after Halloween. So happy Halloween, everybody. I hope you all had a wonderful time watching this. And I hope to see you over on my channel. As a reminder, I will not be putting out content streamed or on YouTube starting on November 3rd for a couple days because I'm going to be out for surgery. So if you want to say hi to me, you can do so on Discord, Twitter, or anywhere else. But I will not be creating content until I'm recovered and feeling well enough to stream. Have a good one!